Hi, and welcome to the Floating Doctors Preventative Healthcare Series, Building a Healthier Future. I'm Dr. Benjamin Lebro, founder of Floating Doctors, and I'd like to share with you a talk by my father, Dr. George Lebro, on some increasingly dangerous and extraordinarily common sleep disorders that frequently go all too undiagnosed. Such an epidemic in this country that is so dangerous. Ever since they invented uh, the internal combustion engine, it's become dangerous. <laughs> Well, the most common cause in our society is voluntary sleep restriction, which uh, is actually an un unanticipated consequence of the invention of the incandescent lamp. Uh, it used to be at night it got dark and people went to sleep. Uh, then there are circadian rhythm disorders. You probably all experience jet lag. Shift work makes people sleepy. There are some um, uh, conditions in which your uh, personal clock gets out of phase with uh, uh, the day-night cycle wherever you are. There are certain neurologic disorders, and then there's poor sleep quality, what we call non-restorative sleep. Chronic insomnia does not cause sleepiness. These patients are always tired but never sleepy. If uh, I take a chronic insomniac patient and uh, put him in a nice, quiet, warm, dark, uh, comfortable uh, room after lunch, they'll lie there, they'll be tired, but they won't fall asleep. Restriction of sleep to less than seven hours a night <clears throat> has been shown to result in cognitive def uh, deficits. They become progressively worse over time. There are adverse effects on uh, uh, your functioning in all areas. The result, of course, is an increased risk of on-the-job errors injury and injuries, traffic collisions, personal conflicts, health complaints, and drug use. The average sleep duration of the normal working population has decreased from about nine hours a night in 1910 to about seven and a half hours currently. And I don't think our uh, genetics have changed that much in 100 years. And 20% of working adults sleep less than six and a half hours a night. And, uh, <clears throat> George, George, you know why we slept nine hours in 1910? Because we didn't have it. No TV. <laughs> well, that's, that actually, uh, television has considerably decreased people's average hours of sleep, that is correct. Areas of concern for public health and public policy, school failures and dropouts, mistakes and accidents in transportation, medical practice and industry, diminished productivity and performance, and uh, excessive sleepiness can cause or exaggerate other health conditions. There was a study published last month. One county in Kentucky uh, raised the time of uh, school start for high school students by one hour. And at the end of two years, traffic collisions by high school students in that county had decreased by 17.6%. Traffic collisions in all of the rest of Kentucky, exclusive of that county, among high school students, had increased by 6.2%. And that's the, um, they also did a survey, um, a diary for two weeks on the old school schedule before they uh, switched. And on the new school schedule, the students were getting point eight, on average 0.8 hours of sleep more <coughs> on the new schedule. Um, I can't remember whether it was Oregon or Washington, but in one of those states several years ago, they raised the uh, high school start time by one hour in uh, several counties, and those counties showed the first year a significant uh, jump in athletic performance and uh, uh, performance on standard testing. Now you say raise the... Uh, Instead of starting at 8, starting at 9. Okay. Sleepiness was the cause of the Exxon Valdez oil spill. The captain was drunk, but the captain wasn't at the wheel. The third mate was at the wheel. The third mate was perfectly capable of piloting that boat if he hadn't fallen asleep because he hadn't been relieved. It was, everybody knows the captain was drunk. Most people don't realize the guy piloting the boat fell asleep because he hadn't been relieved by the drunk captain. The Three Mile Island uh, uh, disaster was blamed on uh, sleepiness of the technicians. The Challenger explosion, everybody knows about this poor O-ring it got cold and cracked, but the O-ring did not make one decision about that uh, launch. 
And uh, the um, investigators of the Challenger explosion said that the underlying cause was that the uh, engineers, scientists, technicians, and managers for the two weeks leading up to the launch had been getting less and less sleep, and they were all sleep deprived and made very poor decisions because of their fatigue. There are twice as many malpractice suits filed against residents for events that occurred the uh, day after a night call than any other day. There's an increase in sleep-related crashes in drivers sleeping less than seven hours a night. The death rate, this is interesting, for drivers with known, untreated, and it's actually severe obstructive sleep apnea, which means more than 30 events per hour on average, is seven times higher than normal. And um, the normal includes people with obstructive sleep apnea undiagnosed. So uh, the uh, death rate must be very high. And uh, drowsiness has been blamed as a major factor in 22% of all motor vehicle accidents, causing as many as 8,000 fatal crashes per year in the uh, United States. The reason for that is even a drunk breaks before the collision. But if you're asleep, and you're going 60 miles an hour, you crash at 60 miles an hour, not at 45. And uh, as the CHP says, no skid marks, asleep at the wheel. By the way, I have a patient with uh, very severe obstructive sleep apnea who drives a propane truck in the Santa Monica Mountains. <coughs> and he uses, his, uh, he uses his CPAP. He loves his CPAP. Uh, it, uh, he's very wakeful during the day now. Um, a lot of people with severe obstructive sleep apnea actually love their CPAP because for the first time in their lives they feel great. What's a CPAP? Um, you'll see. But it, it's, the, uh, it's the first treatment for obstructive sleep apnea now. And uh, I, I love this slide. Hey, Mr. 18-wheel driver, are you ever tired when you're driving? Well, yeah, most of the time. Well, what makes you decide to pull over? Well, when my head's going like this, or I start hallucinating, I know it's time to pull over and take a rest, 82%. Circadian rhythm disorders make you sleepy. They're only disorders if they're not the sleep schedule the patient wants. If you're a baker, you go to bed at 6, 8 p.m., you get up at 2 a.m., that's the sleep schedule you want. If you're a nightclub manager, you go to bed at 5 a.m., you get up at 2 p.m., that's the schedule you want. But if you're a high school student and you're going to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning um, and having to get up for school, that is delayed sleep phase syndrome. Parents hate to hear me say this, but the solution is to remove all electronic equipment from their bedroom. The cell phone, the iPod, the radio, the, the telephone, the television, the computer, if you will remove all electronic equipment from their bedroom, uh, their delayed sleep phase syndrome will start to you know, disappear. Uh, if, you felt, if you've ever had jet lag, you know how uncomfortable it is when your own circadian rhythm is out of phase with uh, whatever uh, time zone you're in. Um, you can only adjust about three hours a day maximum. Uh, there are things that can help. Working at night is not normal. Human beings are not nocturnal, we're diurnal. Um, shift workers uh, who uh, work the night shift um, don't live as long. And uh, they need a lot of support. Uh, there are many more errors uh, and poor decisions made uh, during night shifts than day shifts. The accident rate is higher. We hope that you've enjoyed this presentation of the Floating Doctors Preventative Health Care Series. And if you or anyone that you know seems to suffer from any of these conditions, we strongly urge you to seek your, seek your doctor's advice on how you can investigate and potentially manage this condition before it becomes serious.